I want to bring in our senior investigative correspondent, Aaron Katursky, who's outside the courthouse right now. Aaron, I want to unpack one of the things that Trump said there repeatedly. He's saying, we won at the appellate division, and this judge is refusing to enforce that decision. Walk us through what he's talking about there. So the former president has had some success before the appellate division, which is the next court up ahead of uh, Judge and Gorin here at civil court. And, and he has had some success in limiting parts of the, the case against him. Uh, the appellate division ruled that some of, uh, of the items that were charged by New York Attorney General Letitia James were outside the statute of limitations. But the, the, the bulk of the case remains. And in fact, in a summary judgment motion several months ago, the, the judge ruled that uh, part of former President Trump's uh, business was conducted based on fraudulent financial statements that were submitted to banks and insurance companies so he could get better terms. Uh, that stands. That did not change from the uh, from the appellate division. Trump's had other successes, temporarily getting rid of a gag order that was then reinstated by the, by the appellate division. A and we expect the entire case to be appealed once it's finished. And it is, uh, finally, after uh, 10 weeks of trial nearing an end. Now, Aaron, Trump is back under a limited gag order in this case. So how careful does he need to be about what he says about the case and those involved in it? Well, you can hear that, that he's not being terribly careful, at least when he talks about the, the judge and about the attorney general herself, Letitia James, whom he called a lunatic, you heard just now. Uh, that's nothing new. What he needs to be careful about is how he talks about the court staff, particularly the judge's uh, law clerk who is seated next to him on the bench. He's often seen conferring with her about legal matters, objections and, and things before he makes a ruling from the bench. And, and Trump has disparaged her on social media. That's what led to the gag order in the first place. It was temporarily halted. It's been reinstated. So he needs to watch what he says about her and about other members of the court staff. They've come under threat. There have been a number of death threats, both emailed and phone, phoned into the judge's chambers, we're told, ever since those uh, the, the commentary on social media. So the judge said he's very protective uh, of his staff. Now, Aaron, court is back in session today after the defense called off testimony from Eric Trump. What went into that decision? It, you know, they didn't really say, although the defense said that they believed anything that Eric Trump would have testified uh, to had, had already been entered into evidence by other witnesses. Eric Trump oddly is here today, although his testimony was canceled. And we expect to hear testimony today from an expert in accounting from New York University. And he's expected to testify for the defense that Trump's financial statements were, were properly filled out and, and they were not fraudulent, despite what the judge has already ruled. And that may help with an appellate record eventually. Uh, but Trump is really here as a spectator. He did not have to be here until Monday when he's expected to take the stand once again. Now, you mentioned the judge has already ruled that Trump submitted fraudulent valuations for his assets. So how is the defense trying to make their case? The defense really is trying to lay the groundwork for an appeal primarily. They're also, Diane, uh, trying to convince the judge uh, that there shouldn't be a stiff financial penalty. This is all about what's called disgorgement, how much money Trump will eventually have to give up for submitting fraudulent financial statements to banks and insurance companies. And at the end of the case, the New York Attorney General's office is expected to ask for as much as $400 million, which they say are the ill-gotten gains uh, of submitting those fraudulent statements of financial condition. The defense is really trying to limit that uh, so that Trump doesn't have to pay so much money. And I think we're looking at some live uh, images there of Trump in court right now. He's there, as you said, Aaron, as a spectator today, but on Monday, he's set to take the stand. What can we expect from that? You know, we're not sure what the former president has left. When, when he testified uh, under examination by the attorney general's office, he was plenty uh, combative and, and explained himself that, that he banks were never defrauded, that he thinks the whole case is a sham, that it's brought by a Democratic attorney general who's just out 
uh, for political gain. So we're not sure what's really left for him to say, but he clearly wants to come and testify and participate in his trial. The defense has a couple of arguments they've been trying to make. One is that any overvaluations of his properties on the statements of financial condition were offset because they undervalued other properties. And the judge has said, well, that doesn't really matter. You can't overvalue one just because you undervalue something else. They've also tried to say uh, effectively no harm, no foul, that the banks were paid back. They never defaulted. The Trumps never defaulted on a loan. And the judge said that hasn't mattered because it, it's, it's about the statements being fraudulent. It isn't about whether the banks ultimately got paid back. So, so Trump has been pressing these defenses that the judge has rejected. We'll see what he brings on Monday when he testifies, uh, because his, his whole company, his livelihood, and, and really what, what made him famous, what propelled him to the White House, his business acumen is on the line. All right. Senior investigative correspondent Aaron Katursky, New York. Thank you. Hi everyone, George Stephanopoulos here. Thanks for checking out the ABC News YouTube channel. If you'd like to get more videos, show highlights, and watch live event coverage, click on the right over here to subscribe to our channel. And don't forget to download the ABC News app for breaking news alerts. Thanks for watching.